chapter 10. I'm going to begin reading with verse 19. The Bible says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which He hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, His flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning again for the privilege and opportunity to be in your house. But Lord, I'm asking you right now. Lord, I'm asking you right now for the Holy Spirit to just fill this sanctuary today. Lord, I ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now to rest upon me. And to operate and to move through me this morning, Lord God. And I pray for the anointing this morning that destroyed every yoke to be present in the house today. Lord, I pray for our ears to be open and our hearts to be receptive this morning, Lord God. Lord, that this not just be another message or another sermon this morning, but Lord, let this be a word that comes straight from the throne of grace today. Lord, let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory this morning. Lord, let us leave here, not here as only, but let us leave here today doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody in the house of God said, Amen. 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 And Amen. I got a lot to say this morning. I want to talk about a lot this morning, but I want us, I want us to focus this morning on a new and living way. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about our position in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I want to talk about how we are to live and how we are to practice that life. Amen. A new and living way. Here in Hebrews, beginning in chapter 10 with verse 19, all the way through the end of the book, the writer begins to spur us on to keep the faith. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. The, our faith and keeping the faith this morning. But he spurs us on this morning to keep the faith even in the faith of trial. In the faith of tribulation and persecution this morning. He shows us here how to put our new position in Christ into practice. Because of our new position in Christ through this new and living way, we should draw near to God in faith and hold fast the profession of our faith and consider how to provoke one another to love and good works. Amen. He tells us in the following scripture that we'll read as we go along this morning. He said, let us draw near, let us hold fast, and let us consider. I want to talk about our position this morning because we have a we have a new relationship with God and that comes through Jesus Christ. In this relationship we have boldness or we have what we would call confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Concerning the holy of holies only the high priest could enter there and that could only happen once a year. It was blocked off from the worshippers, from all the worshippers and even all of the other priests by a thick veil. The basis of our confidence this morning has nothing to do with anything in us. Rather, it is about the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. He shed His blood this morning. His blood satisfied the just penalty that God imposed on our sin and we cannot approach God in any other way. Hallelujah. We can't get to Him through good works. It's not any merit on our own. It is only through the blood of Jesus that we can get there. Can you say amen? It's by the blood this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm thankful this morning that I've been washed in the blood. Can you say amen that my sin has been washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ? This is our new and living one, which He inaugurated for us through the veil, that is to say, 
in flesh. This new way is not only living because Jesus lives, but also because He imparts a spiritual life into you and me this morning. Amen. The beginning of salvation is regeneration, which means that by God's power, we move from spiritual death to spiritual life. Can you say amen? Somebody give the Lord praise this morning. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was dead in my sin. Hallelujah. But because of the blood of Jesus this morning, I've been found, and I've been washed, and I've been cleansed.
conviction in the blood of Jesus that we have forgiveness for our sin. Amen. Hallelujah. The church needs to realize this morning that it that needs to realize this morning that it's time yes. for the church to return to holiness. Oh. Hmm? I said it's time for the church to return to holiness. Amen. Yes. To put off the things of the world. Yeah. And to stop dabbling in the things of the world and to get serious with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And get back to serving Him with our whole hearts. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. This is our position. We have, the only reason we have this position this morning, hallelujah, is because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're able. Hallelujah. To come before the throne of grace with boldness. We're able, hallelujah, to come into the Holy of Holies this morning. Yes. Through the veil of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. He made our position possible this morning. Yes. I am who I am this morning because of Jesus. Amen. amen. My name's been written down in the Lamb Book of Life this morning simply because of what Jesus has done amen. on the cross of Calvary. What about our practice? We know our position in Christ Jesus. What about our practice? Mm -hmm. Verse 22 of Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. When it comes to our practicing, our living, our practicing this, this new and living way, when it comes to that, there's three things here that the, that the Scriptures tell us that we have to do. And number one, is, He says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. A true heart is a heart without divided loyalty. A true heart means true in God's sight. A true heart is a heart that is faithful to God. There's no hypocrisy, no putting on a good front for others while hiding sin in our heart. Yeah. Christians live to please God who examines our hearts. Yeah. You see, God knows who we are oh, yes. in here. Yeah. People may know us by how we act and the front that we put on, but God knows. Yes. God knows who we really are. Amen. Yeah. In here. Can you say amen? amen? Christians live to please God because He's the one who examines our heart. We are to draw near to God in full assurance of faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is both God's gift and it's also our responsibility. Amen. You see, faith rests on the promises of God. We are saved through faith and we are to walk by faith. Our faith is not a mindless blind leap in the dark. Our faith rests upon the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. My faith is in nothing else. It's in no one else but Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? And the better we know Him as revealed in His Word, the more we will trust Him in the difficult matters of our lives, and the more we prove His faithfulness. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord is faithful this morning. Amen. The Lord is faithful this morning. Yes. The Lord is faithful this yes. morning. Yes. I tell you, the Lord is faithful to me even at times when I fail Him. Yes. God is still faithful to yes. me. Jesus has never left me. He has never forsaken me. He has always been right there with me. And at times when I felt like I was alone and walking alone, I wasn't walking alone. He was the one carrying me on his shoulder. We find in verse 23 
He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. You see, faith refers to the future hope of our salvation. We think that we're saved now, but we're really not saved. We're not saved until we get there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We publicly confess our faith in Jesus Christ when we were baptized. And we profess it with our mouth every day. That public confession should serve as a strong motivation to hold fast to Him in faith and obedience when we are tempted to sin or to compromise with the world. That word hold fast implies that there is some danger or some difficulty that is trying to pry me loose from my profession of faith in Christ. But church, I want you to know this morning that there is nothing that is going to pry me loose from my faith in Jesus Christ. Rather, the 
command this morning is to consider how to provoke or stimulate one another to love and good works. Doesn't tell us to love and doesn't tell us to do good works. It tells us to consider how we can provoke our brothers and our sisters in Christ. To provoke them or stimulate them, hallelujah, to love and good works. You see, that word consider means that you have to give some thought to this or it won't happen. To give thought to it means that you have to take your focus off of yourself and think about somebody else. You've got to take focus off of yourself and think about others. What does this other person need to help him or her grow in love or good works. This also implies that Christian love needs to be worked in because it's not automatic. Can you say amen? It requires thought and it requires effort on our part. Hallelujah. You see the context where this provoking to love and good works takes place is when we assemble together. That brings us to verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some end, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, some had dropped out of church. Perhaps they had their feelings hurt by other believers. And now they claim that they can worship God better alone. Almost every time when people drop out of church, their focus is on themselves and not on God or others. Can you say it again? Instead of thinking, how can I be used of God to spur others on in love? They think, no one is spurring me on. No one is showing me any love. My needs aren't being met. The church is unfriendly and unloving toward me. They get, in a, they get in a pity party. Oh me. Oh poor me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants to help me. Nobody wants to do anything. Me. Grow up. It's time for the church to grow up. Amen. We need to put on the armor of God this morning and know who we are in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? It's not about what the church can do for us. It's not about what the Lord can do for us. It ought to be about what can I do for the Lord and what can I do for the church. Can you say amen? You want to know why? Because we've all been born again in Christ Jesus. We're born again believers in Christ Jesus. And we ought to be out there working others into the house of God. Now we may have to work with baby Christians because they may have feelings like that, but if you've been serving the Lord any time at all, you ought to be mature by now. You ought to have grown up by now. You ought to be meek and sucking on the ball. Y'all know I love you this morning, right? See, you can practice faith and hope when you're alone. But you can't encourage others to love and good work when you're alone. Amen. You have to gather with the saints to do that. Uh -huh. The author adds that this ministry involves exhorting or encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day here. The day refers to the coming day of judgment when we all will give account Amen. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, uh -huh. whether you realize it or not, you are your brother's keeper. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? You see, if you sense that someone may be dropping out or drifting from the Lord, then we should consider how we can encourage them to deal with the problems that are keeping them away from the Lord and out of the house of God. Because if they isolate themselves from the body, 
It's only a matter of time before the wool begin to pick them off one by one. And then that brings us to verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. If we willfully walk away from the faith, and willfully walk away from Christ and His church after receiving the knowledge of the truth, and return to the life of sin, then there remains no more sacrifice for your sin because you willfully left. There's nothing left but judgment. You, people, don't, people don't like to get deep into the Word of God because the Word of God will tell you like it is. Amen. Amen. You see, verse 28, the Bible says, He that despised Moses all died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God? And hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified mm -hmm. an unholy thing. Listen, he ain't talking, he ain't, he ain't talking about sin. He ain't talking to the sinner. He's talking to church folks Amen. that have come in, got saved, been born again, been washed in the blood, been sanctified. But Wilson, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, turned away. The Bible says there's no more, no more sacrifice for sin from you. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy, an unholy thing and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Now he had insulted the Spirit of grace. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, Pastor. What, what's the Bible saying? The Bible saying that the punishment for them will be a whole lot worse uh -huh. than for anyone else. Uh -huh. Why? Because they knew the truth. Uh -huh. They come to the knowledge of the truth. They were sanctified by the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Uh -huh. They came into a covenant uh -huh. with Him. Amen. Yet they willfully walked away, willfully despised the word of truth. He that despised Moses' law in the Old Testament died without mercy. Come on. I'm going to tell you, if you don't have the mercy of God, you're in trouble. And now they've insulted the Spirit of grace. Listen, listen to the Scripture. For we know Him that has sinned. Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense. I will repay, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Amen. It is a fearful thing. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand. The just shall live by faith. 
If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. That word perdition means destruction. What is the Bible saying to us? The Bible says you can draw back to destruction. You can go back to where you was and what you was. But your punishment is going to be a whole lot worse than it was before. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I'm going to hold on Amen. to my profession of faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to hold on Hallelujah. to my profession of faith. Yes. Can you say it again? Yes. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the yes. same shall be saved. Yes. When Jesus made that statement, He was talking, hallelujah, to those that were living in the last day. Yeah. Listen to what He said. He said, let no man deceive you. Many will come claiming to be Christ. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in many different places. They shall afflict you and kill you and you shall be hated of all nations because you bear my name. I bear the name of Christ today. Hallelujah. I will suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Or have you pulled back? 